All righty. Well, we're getting that recording going, and now we're ready to get rolling. All right. Well, welcome once again, everybody, to the Maximum Performance Webinar Series. Uh, again, my name is Eric Janesco. Uh, I am the head coach of Maximum Acceleration, the professional's coaching company. And we started the series originally with the focus of providing and bringing together a community of learning, those that were dedicated to spending and investing time and energy into the refinement of their craft and ability to perform at a higher level and provide a higher caliber of service to their customer base. And so now as we're approaching almost our 100th episode in this program, I'm very excited and, and pleased to be able to bring to you one of the strongest presenters I've had the opportunity and privilege of getting to know and work with over the years. Um, someone who's become a great friend to me over the years, Mr. Derek Agabert, uh, who is a great trainer and speaker. He is a branch manager in Yuma, Arizona with Academy Mortgage and a outstanding originator in his own right, very experienced industry veteran. And one of the things that uh, Derek has always done uh, extremely well at is taking uh, what can be somewhat complex ideas, systems, or strategies and explaining them in very simple, easy to understand and implement terms. So today's program is really focusing on, you know, we all know it's a buyer's market. We all know that it's a purchase-driven environment and that we've got to find effective ways of proactively identifying people who, can who could benefit from a, an improvement in their housing situation. So when it comes to finding buyers, because there really aren't any refinance deals out there worth going after right now, um, except with the exception of a few small markets, what we're really trying to figure out is how do we connect with people when they are at a place in time where their housing situation is no longer a great fit for them and help them understand how much home buying power they really have in today's market. And one of the people that I think is a true expert at this, and one of the reasons I've invited him to share uh, with you today, his strategies and approaches for how to create maximum reach in minimum time, is Mr. Derek Hagebert. So Derek, I'm going to turn it over to you, let you take us through the program here. Folks, remember that as Derek goes through his program, um, please comment, chime in, ask questions, uh, get engaged, and we want to make this as interactive and, and as thought-provoking for you as possible. So with that, you, Eric. Derek, take it away. Um, would love to ask you one favor, Eric. Uh, while I'm doing the slides, the comment box doesn't show up really well, so if you would, if you can look at any of the comments and if there's a question that comes up, certainly please let me know. Um, really, I think what I want to talk to you about today is the difference between hunting and farming. And I know we've heard this terminology a lot in our business and you hear it a lot in, in sales. But like any other originator, when I got in the business, I was told, here's a rate sheet, go find some loans, and you're basically on the hunt for a deal. And you never really had a relationship. You never really had a methodology for telling people you were in business you were out offering donuts and rates, and, and you were just looking for the next deal, period. Um, what slowly became very obvious is instead of the, the hunter up in the blind, what you became is kind of Elmer Fudd with this, this elephant gun, and you're just kind of blasting at things, hoping you shoot something. But what we really needed to be doing is instead of blindly shooting into the hole, where we don't even know that our rabbit or our prey are right in front of us, let's stop acting like hunters and let's really become what we all should have been is farmers. We want to be tilling our own crops and we want to be reaping the fruits of our own labors, as you will. So from a farming perspective, what would we change about our business if we wanted to become farmers and not hunters? And we would build deeper relationships, we would cultivate those relationships, and we would plant seeds, if you will, accordingly. So my, my question to all of you is, a, have you embraced that we need to be farming our database, we need to be farming our leads, and we need to be communicating with people effectively? And then have you one at a time started putting together something that communicates that? Um, unfortunately, what we, what we know is that when most people are farming, they don't really know where to begin, they don't really know what their key contact methods are, they don't even really know what the system looks like to do this. So what I've done is chop this into three individual pieces for everybody. Number one, there's a really easy system, and I, to the day, still use the Vantage, uh, Vantage Production, the Platinum Marketing for all of my leads, 
and all of my closed campaigns. I have a lot of other stuff that I've built into my own app database. But anybody who's a lead, you can certainly put them into a drip marketing campaign and kind of set it and forget it and get constant information out to them because they don't really have a relationship with you. The more communication you give them purposefully, the more that relationship starts to cultivate. This is just a copy of the screen right out of the Platinum Marketing that if you'll notice right under the suggested campaign, the very top one is past relationships, the very bottom one is leads, prospective clients. I absolutely put everybody I can into those. So if you're kind of a lead and I really don't have a relationship with you, you're in there and you start to get some of my information. Once you're a closed client, you automatically get dumped in there and you continue getting my information so it doesn't become this cold, stagnant relationship. But there's this centerpiece that I think every loan officer needs to craft that becomes crucial for them. And it's what happens when you've built the relationship and you're going through the process of a loan and how do you really communicate during the process. And the question is, there's some people who are visual, there's some people who are auditory, there's some people that are very physical. So some people are going to want phone calls, some people are going to want letters, and some people may respond to a couple of well-planned gifts. All of those you've seen and heard from myself and countless other loan officers about, hey, look at this great automated system that I have, and we do phone calls and emails and faxes. But the problem is sometimes we haven't really asked the right questions. And so what I want to show you is here's kind of some of the touch points I would use, but more importantly, in the end, what we want to review is, have you actually explored what's important with your client? And if I said, Eric, I'm going to ask this question of you. Eric, pretend you're my client. Eric, what's most important to you about this mortgage transaction you and I are going to go through? Uh, geez, well, um, let's see. Uh, you, you obviously, I want to make sure I'm, not, I'm getting a good deal, uh, you know, rates, fees, whatever. Um, Two is I want to be well informed, and, it, and this is a stressful situation. I'm going to be moving in the process, so I need to know accurately what the timing is going to look like on the deal, um, and and just to you know to be well informed and in how it's going to okay. go. So invariably, you just hit all three of the pieces that everybody's going to talk about. They're concerned about price. Am I quoting accurately? Uh, they're worried about communication, being informed, because everybody's got an Uncle Joe that never knew what was going on, and the deal blew up at the very last minute. And then lastly, the timing. Are we going to close on time because my life is hanging in the balance? Because as we know, everybody has a moving truck worth of furniture sitting in front of the house on the day of closing. So are we accurate with a timing perspective? And what sometimes we say isn't what the client hears, and sometimes what the client says isn't what we hear, which is why I always use this slide. Um, funniest cartoon I think I've ever seen is here's a person calling and complaining about a phone utility company's connection, and because of the bad connection, all the utility company hears is, man, you guys are doing great. And so one of the things that you want to understand is with all of the lead touches you have, are you purposefully communicating the way they want to be communicated with? And more importantly, do you have a message that you're dropping in there that is important to you? Because the borrower, borrower wants those three items, price, communication, and timing. What do we all want? And my guess is we all will say the word business, we'll all say the word money, but what we really want is we want other referrals. Have we communicated that we're looking for other referrals? Have we taken the opportunity to say, Mr. or Ms. Client, if I deliver these three things to you, my timing is going to be accurate, my communication is going to be over the top, and my price will be at or below what I've quoted. If I deliver those three things, then is it okay if I ask you for some referrals? And with that law of reciprocity that we've heard before, the obligatory close, if you will, if we deliver what they want, then should they deliver what we want? And I, I would, I would question or I would assume that that answer is yes. So my question is, how many times do you interact with your clients through the file? Um, this is not an original idea. I've heard this one floating around for a, a number of years. And so I swipe and adapt it and called it the red car referrals. And I talked about, you know, when you buy a brand new red car, how many other red cars of the same make and model do you start to see around town? Um, 
everybody has used this before because we're saying or we're trying to get the customer to understand you're in a mortgage transaction, you're going to start to see more people who want to buy or refinance, would you mind referring them to me? But have you ever had the communication with the borrower up front saying, I'm going to do this. I want to remind you of these things because that is our business. And are you upfront enough to say, look, my business is all referral based. We don't have a large overhead. We're not a depository institution. We don't do checking and savings and auto loans. All we do is mortgages. So if you know somebody who wants a mortgage or needs a mortgage, would you mind sending them to myself and my team because that's what we live on. If you deliver the three things your borrower wants, price, timing, and communication, is it then okay to ask them for those things? And I would submit it is. So we drop a letter right at the beginning that talks about the red car referrals. We drop in a couple of business cards and that goes out to them right at the beginning after I've had that verbal communication with the buyer that if I deliver these things, can I then ask for referrals? During the process, right as the file goes to underwriting, we send them a popcorn letter with some movie tickets in it and just say, sit back, relax, your file's going to underwriting, we're almost there, etc. Just to again, A, make sure we're communicating, B, to let them know we're on time, and again, one of the very last sentences, again, ask the borrower, if you know anybody who would like this speed of execution and this level of communication, would you mind sending them to us? Now, you can automate these things. It's also so easy to have these letters drafted print a copy of every one of the letters, put it in the borrower's file so you, your assistant, or your processor, or even your receptionist, when you hit that point in the transaction, you simply stuff the letter in the envelope and mail it. It doesn't have to be a cumbersome process to put these things together, but what you do need to identify is when do you really want to communicate to the borrower? And what are you really asking them for? Because yes, Eric Janesco, when he's doing a loan for you, wants to communicate that we can relax, but what he's really saying is, relax, I have this under control. If you know anybody else that I can help, please send them to me. We do closing gifts. We send out the address stamper. We have an amazing company in town that does uh, the gift on the left is a date tray, and it has my business cards, and it has referral cards on it. I don't know if you can see the ribbon, but it says my company name on the ribbon. Presents very well. Greg Frost, back in the day, used to talk about fruit baskets to the place of employment. Swipe and adapt absolutely everything you can. We simply went to a local company and said, hey, Yuma, Arizona is known for dates. Let's put together a date tray. These only go to the place of employment, not to their home. Why? Because we want to be big and showy about the client. We want something going to their place of employment that communicates to them that we're on time, that shows we're communicating with them. But even more importantly, now they get to communicate with all of their friends and coworkers that this is what's going on. That simple communication method, if we don't get one referral out of each transaction, we're not doing something correctly. So put a couple of built-in gifts in. Now what you'll notice with all of the letters and gifts that we send out, I literally give out 34 business cards with each and every transaction. I have 17 touch points, two business cards per touch point. I have 17 touch points that I communicate in writing or with gifts or with closing information uh, or even after closing letters with the borrower. You and I know what they're going to do when they read the letter or they get the gift. They're going to look at it. They're going to say, man, that's great. And if they don't know anybody right then and there, where do those business cards go, Eric? They typically go in the trash, right? Exactly. Yeah, so, I had my mute on. Sorry about that. No, I... Well, I figured I'd get you too. But honestly, I know every business card goes in the trash if you don't have somebody to give it to within five minutes, ten minutes. You're not going to leave them laying around. So why do I give out 34 business cards with each and every transaction? Because at some point they're going to have somebody to give it to. And candidly, I can get a box of 5,000 business cards, full color, full gloss, looking great, for under 125 bucks. Why would I not give them out like water? Because it doesn't matter. The cost really doesn't matter. So purposefully, I'm giving them ways to refer me. Here's a copy of the closing book. Again, this is not unique information. We do a closing book that has all of their important information, the note, HUD, the deed of trust. And we have another company in town that does peanut baskets. There's peanuts and chocolates and dates and all kinds of other stuff in here. 
But again, this package we personally deliver to their place of employment. If they're far enough away, I will go ahead and FedEx or UPS it to them. But here's another opportunity just for an eyeball-to-eyeball, face-to-face communication or conversation. But what are we really doing? We're simply reminding the borrower of the three things that they asked us for up front. Did we meet our price obligation? Are we communicating over the top better than anybody else? And most importantly, were we accurate with our timing? And as long as I've closed on time and I've communicated every Tuesday and we are at or below our price, then I have the right to ask for a referral. This gives me a face-to-face -face meeting so I can ask somebody for that referral. 30 days after closing, I have a well-written letter. Again, you can grab all of these right out of Vantage Production out of the Loan Toolbox site. Um, 30 days after closing, it's the wow, it's hard to believe, it's been over a month. By now, you should have received your first payment coupon. If you need anything else from me, please don't hesitate to give me a call. 60 days after closing, we have another letter that just reminds them, I'm going to keep up with you. I promised you I would communicate with you. I'm going to keep up with you because if something changes in the market, potentially refinancing, which we all know is not going to happen very much right now, I'm going to call you. But more importantly, if there's opportunities, I need your help to communicate with your other friends, family, and coworkers. Again, all I'm really doing is pre-building these items in there so it gives me the right to ask for the referral. Now, none of this matters. The three questions that I asked or that you answered, Eric, is I have to ask what's most important to you in this transaction. Typically, they'll say something re-ask it. What else is important to you? After they answer that, is there anything else that's important to you? Because the first answer is generally not the most important. Typically, it's the third answer that they say once they really get it off their chest, this is what's really most important to me, and then communicate that you're going to handle that item. If they tell me that making sure that their doormat is clean before they move in, you better believe that myself and the agent are going to make sure their doormat's clean if that's what they said was the third most important thing to them. But if they simply say, well, you know, it's price and my brother Joe had to bring in $5,000 more at closing and you know what, his rate was higher, I'm going to continue to market and make sure he realizes none of that can happen anymore because of the tolerance of the GFEs and what my commitment is to my client. Once I have asked those questions and identified it, now I'm going to turn around and say, okay, here's what's really important to me. Once I have these items here, I'm going to say, here's the people that I need to be introduced to. So when you're going through this transaction, here's kind of the professionals, if you will, or the industries that I work very well with. I give them a copy of this, and I have it on letterhead, and I present it to the borrower in their closing package. If you have any of these other people who are part of your family's team, Maybe you have a financial planner, maybe you have an insurance agent, maybe you have a property manager. Any of these people, I want to make sure we're on the same page with. So if you wouldn't mind, introduce me to all of these uh, important people. That's right out of Loan Toolbox, out of Vantage Production, um, and that's been there for years. I have since modified it to say the last piece of the puzzle that I'm going to ask you for is what words do I want you to listen for? And nobody ever walks up to Eric Janesco and says, you know, Eric, I really want to owe, meh, quarter million, half million dollars. Could you find me somebody to put me in debt half million dollars? In your career, Eric, have you ever had anybody ask you that? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> what I and have had is people ask me, do you want to buy a bigger home because you're having your fourth child? Exactly. And so if you look at this bubble presentation, I took the same chart and modified it. Here's what I give my clients. Here's the trigger words that they're going to hear that, again, I'm going to go back to what's important to them. If I handle your three most important items and we effectively close your transaction early or on time, may I ask you to listen for these keywords? Tell me or introduce me to people who say, my rent is too high, I'm getting married, I'm getting divorced, we're having a baby, I want a pool, I don't have enough space, my neighbors are horrible, I need to invest. Any of those items become trigger words for you and I as the loan officer and consequently our referral partners as the realtor. This chart right here is one of the most fun things I get to go through because the client sitting across the desk from me is already nervous. You and I know we're going to judge their credit, we're going to judge their income, we're going to look at how much they have saved. Here's all I want to do is remind them that the reason they're buying a home is from one of these items in the bubble. 
help me find friends and family that are also looking for those items, and this is going to be a simple process for them as well. Um, so most importantly, if I handle those three items for them, can I then turn around and ask them for items? Now, ultimately, what the communication pieces we're trying to do for them is show they're important to us. We're trying to show they're important when we're telling them to relax, we've gone to underwriting. We're trying to show them they're important, that sit back and it's been 30 days since closing, hopefully you've gotten a payment coupon by now. We're trying to make sure that we communicate like somebody we want a deep relationship with. This is the key for me, is do you have a simple birthday program? Do you have an email that you send to people for birthdays saying, hey, happy birthday? Possibly do you even send the same thing to your referral partner? saying, hey, you know, it's Eric Janesco's birthday tomorrow, maybe drop him an email or a phone call and wish him happy birthday. Do you turn around and send a handwritten card to them on their birthday? You know, if you think back, my birthday this year, I received two birthday cards. One was my mom and one was my dad. Consequently, yes, I did get one from my wife and kids, but two external from my household. How many people actually get birthday cards on their birthday? simply communicate, hey, you know, hey, Eric, wanted to wish you happy birthday, hope you enjoy your day, spend a little time with your family. That little communication goes miles to help get other referrals because you're keeping them important and it's not just a transaction anymore. Again, if I handle what's important to them, Eric? yeah. I'm going to jump in here and make one other emphasis point. Guys, keep in mind, this is a handwritten card. I, I, I remember the, the last my last birthday, um, I got a card from my insurance agent, and it's the same card that I've gotten every year for the past five years, and it's pre-printed, and it's obviously done by a machine, and how do I feel about my insurance agent with that pre-formatted, pre-automated, boilerplate type of birthday card? I actually respect him less because he sends me the stupid thing. It's like, why waste the postage, right? But a meaningful comment from somebody who, with a handwritten card is an extremely powerful alternative to that just boilerplate uh, type of, of mass-produced card. And if you will notice, my handwriting really is atrocious. I mean, let's be honest. If I wasn't a loan officer, I should be a doctor. It's okay. You don't have to have amazing penmanship. You don't have to have amazing cards. Um, I would say can you get the pre-printed cards maybe the first year to start it, but move to the handwritten cards or spend a little bit of money on some kind of a postcard letterhead that you can do these on? Um, it really doesn't take a lot of time. You know, even if you said there's, you know, five working days in a week, you've got really, um, I mean, you've got 250 working days a year. Even if you had a database of a thousand people, you're going to average four cards a day. It's not a big deal to do. But come up with, again, going back to how are you finding leads in this market? You need to ask people for referrals. The person who asks the most and has the deepest relationship will get the most. Yes, you can spend lots of money on marketing. Yes, you can do lots of money on pay-per-click advertising and postcards and billboards. But really, the people you build the best relationships with, if you ask them and you have a real relationship with them, are they going to then reciprocate and give you a referral? Birthdays or any of the other items that are happening, when you saw the letters going out, if I'm not the one personally delivering the baskets, I'm calling. And I'm saying, hey, I just wanted to follow up and make sure you got the very important information we gave you. Um, if it's your birthday, hey, Eric, happy birthday. Hope you and your family are having an amazing day and you're taking a day off. Continue to make the phone call because you and I know you get less phone calls on your birthday than you actually get cards. Yeah, I got a card from my mom and dad, and you know what? I didn't get a call. I really didn't. I got the card, and then the day after I got the call, um, partly one was my fault, partly one was their fault. Do you call your clients and communicate with them? whether for birthdays or any of the other touch points, make sure you're calling them. Um, and again, what you'll notice is in all of this stuff, there are easy trigger points. All you need to do is sit down and say, I want to communicate with my client at this point in the transaction, and I want this outcome. You don't need to have 100 touch points. Here's a copy of a, a birthday cake for some of our really special clients or for the people that I have great relationships with. You know what? 
I really do send birthday cakes. So, you know, what does a birthday cake cost you? Twenty, thirty dollars. If you're a nurse at a hospital and I have a great relationship with you and we had a fabulous closing, is it okay if I send you a birthday cake to your place of employment and therefore let you brag to all of the other 20 nurses on your floor that Derek did an amazing loan for you and oh my goodness, he sends me a birthday cake? I don't know that there's any better marketing than that. Um, now, you asked me from a touch point, trigger point perspective, here's how many touch points I really have in what we do, and this is way more than you're going to want or need. We have approximately 91. Let me interrupt you just real quick. There's one. More, there were a couple of questions that came through about the birthday sure. uh, campaigns. Um, one with the cards. Do you actually put business cards in the handwritten note cards that you send? And two, when you actually make the birthday phone calls, do you directly ask for referrals? On the birthday, no. That is the only one that, if you'll notice in the picture too, that's a great question, by the way. Um, I do not put a business card in the birthday one. Now, what you'll notice is my handwritten card did say my name at the top. I had my stationery printed specifically to say Derek Agerberg and the Academy Mortgage logo on the bottom, but this is just my personal stationery that I'm writing a heartfelt note to you. The birthday call, I am not asking for business because that is about their day. It's not about anything that I'm doing. The in-process that we just closed, the, the closing gift, all of that is about something I'm doing for them. The birthday call basically goes something like this. Um, hi, is Eric Genesco there? Yeah. Hey, Eric, it's Derek over at Academy Mortgage. How are you doing today? Oh, pretty good. It's my birthday. I'm excited. Fantastic. Actually, that's why I was calling. You know what? Um, my sister and I were going through some of our files, and I realized it is your birthday today. So I wanted to call and A, wish you happy birthday, and find out what are you doing today. Are you and your family taking the day off? Are you guys doing anything special? Are your kids cooking for you this evening? What plans do you guys have? Yeah, we're going to just go out for dinner with the kids after work. I'll probably get out of here a little early if I can, and you know, just take it easy. Fantastic. Any any specific dinner plans, or, or what does your birthday dinner look like? I don't know. Uh, usually the, the kids want me to pick, but they usually vo vo volunteer their, uh, their suggestions, of course. I'll, I'm sure I'll hear the McDonald's in there somewhere. I was going to say, isn't that funny how we as parents, uh, it is your birthday and we'll always end up at a pizza restaurant or a hamburger joint or something like that. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I just want to call and wish you happy birthday. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And I just want to say, you know, you were one of our favorite clients. I appreciate being able to work for you before. But have an amazing day, Eric. And if we can do anything else for you ever, please don't hesitate to call. Happy birthday, buddy. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, man. And that's it. So. That is all about, and you know, if you know your client, you know how many kids they have. You know roughly what their ages are. I would certainly gear that conversation to, hey, I, Derek Eggerberg, have three boys. You know what? My boys are always going to want to be doing pizza or burgers or something. If it's, you know, teenage girls, are they going to want to go to Olive Garden or Red Lobster or something because they're starting to pretend they're adults? Whatever those things are, kind of gear the conversation that way. But the the point is, out of all of the potential emails and faxes and letters and phone calls and closing gifts, I personally have 91 touches that I'm doing throughout the transaction between the buyer, the listing agent, the selling agent, etc. But what does it really look like? And to break this down in the nuts and bolts, we really only have four opportunities to do something. We have phone calls, we have emails, we have faxes and letters. So start one at a time. I'm not telling you to implement 91 items. What I'm asking is, if, it, if you were sitting on the other side of the fence, let's pretend I was your loan officer and you were the borrower, what is most important to you? And if you say timing, then you need to craft one or two or three letters that discuss the timing of the whole transaction. You need to have a, your file was just submitted to underwriting, sit back and relax and here's what we're doing. Um, maybe 30 days after closing, you have the, hey, I can't believe it's been a month, your first payment letter. But craft a couple of messages that key into what they find most important. And it will always be one of three things. It will always be timing, price, and communication. So if you say these are the only four items you can communicate with, it's 
and really you could do face to face, but a lot of us are not going to be in markets small enough that you can be face to face with everybody. So what we're assuming is electronic communication, phone communication, or letters. Take the time to go swipe and adapt three or four letters right out of the, the platinum marketing, right out of Vantage Productions Loan Toolbox, um, and implement them. And there's letters all over the place. But the key is, have you, and if you have not, will you have a conversation with your borrower to say, Eric, tell me what's most important to you about this transaction, and write it down. Take some notes. Make sure you then explore the second question. OK, what else is important to you? Lastly, is there anything else important to you? And simply make sure you're taking care of business the way your clients want. Because if you do, and you've asked them those questions, and you honor them with those answers throughout the transaction, then I believe it's OK. Law of reciprocity says it's OK to turn around and ask for referrals. And if you use those catchphrases, use that, that bubble chart of we're moving, we don't have enough space, I'm married, I'm divorced, kids, whatever you can then key into how do they find referrals for you. Because I think the, the last takeaway I have is we've never really taught our clients how to find a referral. We say things like, I want referrals, or we'd love a referral, or the kindest uh, compliment I can ever get from you is a referral. But we never taught our clients, hey, these are the things to look for to find a referral. Because unfortunately, we know what a referral looks like, smells like, and tastes like. But nobody ever goes, yeah, my friend's looking for that quarter million dollar mortgage. They want to be in debt for a half million dollars for 30 years. I need to get him over to Derek. But their buddies do talk about, man, we just don't have enough space. I can't believe my two-car garage is full, and I can't even put one car in my garage. So come up with purposeful points of communication. I would love to answer any questions, but what I'm going to tell you is the takeaway is when you look at my 91 touches, it did not happen overnight. It's at a touch point, add another touch point, find another trigger point that becomes important, and slowly grow this thing over time. And I'm happy to, to help out in any way I can. So with that, any questions on trigger points, touch points, and ways to communicate? All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and prompt through the questions. By the way, Derek, you can undock the questions panel from the control panel on the right-hand side of your platform, and you can pull that up so you can kind of read through some of the questions and comments that have come through. Uh, for those of you, I'm going to pull in some of the, the general questions that we've kind of been filtering here as uh, we go through this. Um, I'm going to also say one other thing, too, to reinforce. I mean, you know, what Derek's sharing with you about these life events, I mean, you know, the first question you have to ask, and it goes back to what I learned from Todd Duncan you know, 15 years ago, which is, who do I know who knows who I want to know? And when it comes to people that are in a, that something in their life has changed enough that the house they're in is no longer a good fit, that is one of the best opportunities to identify a family that could benefit from improving their housing situation. Now, in fact, it was kind of like Derek and I were talking about even before we started the call. Um, you know, there's, there's an initiative we're going to be working on launching this fall called the Make a Difference Challenge. It's, it's based off of a concept we call the Home Opportunity Initiative. With housing affordability at an all-time high, people's buying power is so incredibly stronger today. If we're not doing everything we can, and, and we can even take this conversation and make it less about us and a lot more about them and the people they know and care about, when we talk to our customers about their friends, their family, their colleagues at work who are in a, in a home that's a poor fit for the needs of their family, and they could make a change at a time when housing affordability is at an all-time high and their buying power is maximized, why wouldn't we want to do everything we can to, to be proactive in encouraging them to reach out to their friends and family and colleagues uh, about helping them take advantage of this incredible housing opportunity? So using some of the basic strategies and talking points and those kind of things that Derek uh, has shared with you today are key ways to very quickly and easily and simply add a couple of conversations to your interactions with these borrowers, these times when, you know, whether you call them hero moments or otherwise, these times when we're having a naturally positive interaction with our clients and talk to them about who else they know that's in a position to benefit. And if it's story-based in nature, like, for example, who do you know that is, uh, you know, somebody who's, you know, family who just keeps their nose clean, works hard, pays their bills on time, and they've been renting the same place for the last couple of years? And 
what's the best way to get a hold of them to at least identify whether they're aware of how much buying power they really have in today's market? Because we do find a lot of families get a nicer home for less or the same a month as what they're paying in rent. Practical yeah. reality of four and a half percent interest rates. So, um, all right. With that being said, I yeah, just go had ahead, a couple of really uh, simple questions. Um, Lynn had asked, "What are the the name tags made out of that I put on the birthday cakes?" They're actually just miniature business cards. The same company that I have print my business cards, they print them in miniature. And if you order the waxy uh, cards on both sides, they don't need to be laminated. What you'll notice is there's kind of a clear border on all of those that we actually just run them through the laminator and cut them. So it's just a miniature business card of exactly what our business cards are um, and plop them on there. It's a piece of cake. They're not really expensive at all. Um, the other question was, do I think it's important to handwrite the address on the transaction letters? And I really don't. If you'll notice, all of the letters that I showed on there were uh, set up in a way that the top left-hand corner is set up for a dual windowed envelope. So my receptionist, when the letters print, they just fold them, stuff them in a dual windowed envelope. It does look like a big business type letter. Um, those are not handwritten at all. The birthday cards are 100% handwritten. And at the start, I introduce myself with a handwritten. At the conclusion, I send a handwritten thank you. But those three letters, beginning, birthday, and end, are the only three that are handwritten. Everything else is set up for a, a double windowed envelope, so nobody has to worry about labeling nor handwriting. Nice. Uh, a neat little trick with layout and design that just you know, further enhances the efficiency of getting that letter printed and in the envelope and out the door. Um, you know, you could spit that letter out using form fields from your CRM. They, you know, and they can. Uh, and I know, Derek, you've talked about many times. You have the the ability to automate that function to where those letters are just generated automatically at those trigger points in the transaction. Um, they spit out on the printer automatically. Your receptionist grabs them off the, the printer, slaps them in the envelope, sticks the postage on them, and gets them out the door, which is a real easy and efficient way of doing it. Again, guys, Derek is a master at this stuff, and he and his team have spent years developing these systems and procedures. Um, and so, you know, I, what I don't want you to be uh, thinking here is that you've got to go build this, you know, you've got to shut down your office and spend hours, you know, hundreds of hours building this, this custom automation system that's going to have all the bells and whistles to it. Um, if you if you if you heard what Derek said a few minutes ago, one of the best ways to implement these things is start with one or two pieces at a time and implement that, and then add to it little by little over time. Um, that being said, other questions, guys, keep posting those questions and comments in um, as we kind of go through the next section here. Um, just in the interest of time, there was a couple of things. That, there were a couple of questions that came through here about a couple of other things, and I'm going to take just a few minutes. You heard Derek mention many times uh, through the course of today's program a little bit about the Vantage Production Platinum Marketing System. You may have noticed that today's program was sponsored by Vantage Production um, and the Platinum Marketing System. Uh, one way you can find out more information about the Platinum Marketing System, what it involves, and, and both Derek and I use this, both of us serve as faculty for Vantage Production. Um, we use this in our active marketing uh, regularly. It is probably one of the simplest and easiest uh, turnkey systems that literally you load your database via an Excel spreadsheet, you dump it in, you set up your campaigns, and, it, and it's kind of done for you, set it and forget it style, uh, where you really don't have to worry about um, maintaining top of mind awareness with your clients if you don't have anything better in place already. Now certainly you can take the information from that and little by little modify it and evolve it to where it's uh, you know, going to be more tailored to your specific group of customers and those kind of things. But uh, as far as a great place to start with, with connecting with and staying top of mind with your customers, um, there really isn't much better out there, especially not industry specific. Um, so if you'd like more information about the Vantage Production uh, Platinum Marketing, they're offering a free 30-minute guided tour that you can sign up for. Um, you can go to thevantageproduction.com slash P2M, uh, P the letter Paul, to uh, the numeral 2M of the letter Mary, vantageproduction.com slash P2M and sign up for the demo. Uh, or you can just go ahead and call their office at 1-800-963-1900.
Uh, one thing they did want to tell you tell me about, and I noticed in the attendee list that there are several um, LTBers in here. Uh, we've got quite a quite a gathering of folks that have joined us from the webinar today that are longtime Lone Toolbox members and and participants in the in the message boards and those kind of things, guys. Uh, one thing you might be excited to know, and 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 the marketing team over at Vantage asked me to remind you that they have some exciting announcements coming out. Uh, one, Michael Mayer is going to be relaunching the um, a series of interviews with top real estate producers and business leaders, uh, where they're going to be relaunching the Get Knowledge interview series in the not just the future here. Um, some of you may be aware that it was a regular feature of the Platinum Marketing and Lone Toolbox series uh, programming, and it had gone dark for a little while um, while uh, Vantage was working on the launch of their new full-scale CRM. Uh, they are bringing that back here over the next month or so. I think it's slated for a mid-July launch at this point, so definitely want to be watching for upcoming uh, additions to that content. Um, last thing I wanted to uh, share with you is many of you were asking, what is maximum acceleration, what do we do, and how do we do it? Um, well, let me take just a couple of seconds to kind of answer this question. And again, this is not for everybody, and, and this is a service uh, that we provide, and, and to, to say that we're you know, selling a service would not be an appropriate assumption here. The reality is, is if you want to take your business to another level, anytime you want to grow or evolve, you're going to go through three distinct phases, assessment, planning, and execution. And so if you're interested in making that happen in record time and you'd like to think about or talk about the possibility of engaging a professional coaching program to help you do that, but it really comes down to this concept of accountability. I mean, if you look at the top performers in any industry, the Michael Jordans, Wayne Gretzky's, the Tom Brady's of the world, you know, they all had somebody in their life who cared as much about their own success, if not more so, that would hold them accountable, that would be that mentor, that resource, that uh, contributor, that person they could share ideas with and bounce ideas off of that uh, would would help them refine and see the things that we can't see for ourselves often. I mean, I know my personal uh, growth and my personal development over my career over the last 20 years would be nowhere close to what it is if it weren't for the the support, guidance, and advice of mentors and accountability partners and coaches that I've engaged over the years. I know Derek's uh, situation is much the same story. Um, you know, we've both benefited from the collaboration that we've shared with each other. And what it really comes down to is just that person that can be that outside perspective, that advisor that has credible knowledge, the person that you can share ideas, goals, and strategies with and that they can hold you accountable. What it really all comes down to is in 1998, Brigham Young University did a research study on what it really took to create action on ideas. And you guys can read through the slide and it kind of comes down to it, but there were basically four things that you need if you want to guarantee 95% chance of implementation. You need a specific plan. It needs to be written how you're going to achieve that goal. It has to have a specific date and time frame for it. And fourth, it needs to be shared with somebody and ask that person to hold you accountable to that deadline. You do those four things and you guarantee a 95% better or better chance of implementing. So whether it's the you know a colleague at work, whether it's a, a you know, a, you know, camaraderie with a fellow loan officer in your office, or a sales manager, or in some cases, uh, you know, a spouse can work. Although the danger there is they need to have credible knowledge and experience that you can benefit from as well. Uh, if you don't have that kind of person in your life, you're welcome to talk to our coaching staff about how we provide. There's basically three levels of service that we offer. One is we offer a library, a suite of home study-based program training material that give you access to not only the instructional elements, but the uh, actual tools and resources you would need, conversation outlines, uh, document templates and letters, interview questions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and there's a couple of different ones. There's one specific I'll share with you here in just a minute that's a home study course program. The second thing we offer is we offer a group coaching on-site, uh, a group coaching program called Critical Mass that can be offered in a public environment or in a corporate controlled environment. We also do offer on-site training and coaching programs for uh, corporate groups, and then we offer our one-on-one -on -one personal coaching. If you're interested in finding out more about the coaching process and what it could how it could benefit you, the best way we've found to do that over time is to invite you to experience it. So we offer what we call a, no a strategy session, which is a no-cost, no-obligation service. Um, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the coach 
uh, you'll get to actually experience some coaching, get some solutions to one of your biggest challenges or difficulties. And of course, as part of the conversation, we'll talk about what, if any, of those three levels of service would be appropriate for you and how to engage them if and when it makes sense. If you're interested in taking advantage of one of those strategy sessions, feel free to go ahead and hop on our website at mxlcoach.com slash strategy and just let us know that you're interested in taking advantage of that uh, strategy session. The other way to do that is uh, you can go ahead and post here in the Q&A platform of the webinar that you're interested in one of those strategy sessions. Just remember to give us the best phone number and email address for being able to get one of those scheduled. Our, team will follow up with you uh, very quickly here after the webinar and uh, make sure that we are coordinating getting that strategy session scheduled. They are typically filled on a first-come, first-served basis. There's a limited number of them available every week because it really does depend on the schedule availability of myself and our coaching staff. Uh, other than that, that's one of the best ways to experience the overall value of coaching. Um, all right, so I mentioned also that we'd be talking a little bit about one of the upcoming uh, events. If you'd like more information about more in-depth overview of the coaching program, but you don't necessarily want to do it in a one-on-one -on -one environment, we do also have coming up uh, July 1st, Tuesday, July 1st, which I believe is next Tuesday in all honesty, is our next Maximum Acceleration Experience, which is a live interactive demo. We'll do some live coaching in a group environment. It's kind of an open mic, um, ask the coach type of call as well. Uh, to where you can get some specific guidance and feedback in more of a group environment. We'll also talk a little bit more in depth about what comes with the different coaching programs, which is another way of finding out a little bit more about what we offer here at Maximum Acceleration. Uh, thirdly, if you're interested in one of the great training events that's coming up, uh, the second week of July there are still tickets available for the Ultimate Mortgage Expo and the Women's Mortgage Leadership Conference, known as the Mortgage Star Conference. If you're interested in tickets for those, uh, just get a hold of us here at the phone number, talk to Christy, and she can get you some special pricing on tickets for either the Ultimate Mortgage Expo or the Mortgage Star uh, Leadership Conference for Women in Mortgage. Uh, that will be coming up the first, week, first full week of July. Also, I mentioned that one of the home study course material programs that we have available is what we call our Double Your Income with Power Partners training program. This is a step-by-step -step process of how to build uh, it successfully and systematically strong, committed, and loyal partnerships with business development partners like realtors, financial planners, CPAs, insurance agents, attorneys, et cetera, et cetera. It's just like that, uh, that bubble picture that Derek showed you about all the different um, service providers that can be great alliance resources and partners for us that can make a huge difference in making a, leveraging strategies and turning uh, those relationships into a much more profound and much more significant flow of purchase volume. Uh, that home study course program, it's a, a about six and a half hours of training. It walks you through step by step how to build uh, a system for attracting, engaging, and securing committed partnerships with those kinds of, of uh, partners. That program is available uh, regularly at six ninety five for the program. If you go on our website, you can actually get access to it uh, today only for two forty seven. If you go on our website and when you get to the shopping cart page, use or apply the discount code DDL Max in all capital letters. Uh, that'll knock the pricing down on the W Income video training down to 247 uh, for that program, uh, that self-guided training program. And of course, you do that by going to our website, going to the shopping tab uh, in the set top section, click here, and that'll take you into the shopping cart uh, to select the DVD home study course material, the W Your Income web shop series. Instant delivery on this one, uh, literally within minutes of of finishing the transaction, you'll have the links to the video download page and everything you need to go ahead and get started with that program instantaneously. Otherwise, guys, uh, not to belabor the point any further, just wanted to walk you through one last thing that I wanted to share with you, which is um, before you leave today's call, before you, um, you know, step into that next phone call or return that next email, um, you know, one of the best ways to take the time you've invested so far today and actually get significant value out of it. I mean, you've got some great ideas. Derek has uh, shared some ideas or strategies that I've never even heard him share before, so I'm very uh, appreciative and, and grateful that he did that for us today. Um, I know I've got some new things that I'm going to be implementing in my business as a result of today's program as well. But those ideas are useless if I don't do something with them. 
Now the next thing I've got to do here is I've got to put those in action. I've got to put them in play in my business on a daily basis. So here's what I want you to do. So you'll take two minutes before you do anything else. Let's solidify some action and go think back to that Brigham Young University study. So here's a four-step process for you. I want you to take just a couple of seconds and answer these questions for yourself real time. Write them down. Grab a piece of scratch paper. Hopefully you've been taking notes off today's program. Here's what I want you to do. One, what was the most valuable thing you heard in today's program? What was the one idea you want to make sure you implement first? By the way, coincidentally, there were some questions uh, a little bit earlier in the program about will you get a recording of this. All registered attendee, you know, all people who registered for today's program will receive an email a little bit later this week with a copy of the video link, the PowerPoint, and some additional uh, follow-up information available to you. Uh, keep in mind, you know, be patient with us. It does take, uh, there's several hours behind the scenes work that has to be done to transcode the video into a format that will play well in a, in, a, in a streaming environment. And getting that posted and formatted and out the door to you does take our team usually between 24 to 48 hours. So worst case, by end of business Thursday, you'll have that video to refer back to later. So just pick one. What's the most powerful idea you want to implement first? Uh, the handwritten note card um, at uh, loan acceptance or loan approval. The, 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 the fruit tray like Derek used with the date tray um, at, at, uh, you know, at clear to close. Or uh, the, the birthday cake to customers who work in a large office. Or even just the handwritten birthday note card and birthday phone call. Simple, easy, quick things you could execute right away that you could start building into your system that will create that one additional touch point that engages customers at a point where they, you can help them help the people they care about take advantage of this incredible housing opportunity. So right now, what was the one most valuable thing you heard in today's program? Two, what specific action do you need to take to make that a part of your daily business? What is the next steps? to making that happen. Third, before you leave this call, before you take that next phone call or respond to that next email, decide by when are you going to have those action items completed. When are you going to have that action implemented? And fourth, who are you going to share that action plan with and ask them to hold you accountable? I mean, think about it from this perspective. Let's say I wanted to lose weight as a New Year's resolution and I start out well, okay, maybe I don't go jogging January 1st, um, <laughs> January 2nd, Jan I go out, maybe I go a little bit further than I should because I'm out of shape. Uh, January 3rd, I don't go quite as far. January 4th, I barely make it around the block. January 5th, I'm exhausted. Every bustle in my body aches. It's cold and it's wet and it's nasty outside weather-wise. And, and I just, you know, roll over, hit the snooze button and never go jogging again. But how different would that be? If, let's say, I decided I wanted to do that same plan, but I was talking about it at the New Year's, part, uh, New Year's Eve party, and my buddy said, that's a great idea. Why don't we do it together? Well, it's January 5th, and it's still cold, wet, and nasty outside, and I'm still exhausted, and every muscle in my body aches, but I know my buddy's going to be on my doorstep at 5.30 to go jogging. So more than likely, I get up and do it. I mean, the reality is, it is so much harder to break the promises we make to somebody else compared to how easy it is to break the promises we make to ourselves. So I want to encourage you and inspire you to take action with the ideas you've heard today. I want to challenge you to create a specific action plan with a deadline. And I want you to make sure that you find somebody that will be that accountability partner for you. And if you would like information or support in that respect, if you would like to reach out to our coaching team, uh, and talk to them about the possibility of engaging us as that accountability partner, then uh, feel free to go ahead and take advantage of that by posting that you'd like one of those strategy sessions in the Q&A. Just put strategy session, please give us the best phone number and email address to contact you for scheduling that, and we'll make sure we get that call set up for you. Otherwise, I, I, I want to challenge you and inspire you and encourage you to create your action plan and find that accountability partner for yourself so that you can create that 95% chance of implementation. All right, with that being said, guys, uh, we're going to hang tight for just a few more minutes here. And, and I guess there's one last thing I would love to do, which is, uh, again, Derek, thank you so much for your willingness to participate. Um, you know, incredible program today and just 
you know, some very, very strong, easy to implement information that I loved uh, you sharing with our audience today. So thank you for an amazing program. Um, I can't appreciate it enough. Thank you, Eric. Have a great day, everyone. Definitely. And for those of you that are still on the call, if you want to go ahead and make sure you get any of your additional questions posted, um, I know, Derek, you've got a very tight schedule, so if you need to go ahead and hop off, I totally understand. I'm going to hang tight for just a few more seconds here, folks, uh, just to handle any last-minute questions, comments, uh, thoughts, ideas, if, if you're interested.